I'm passionate about what dogs can do, and I believe the best chance somebody has of being found, I believe it's with a dog. Search! If they come to the search, you throw a switch, it's game on, nothing exists but the search. That's the dog that goes out and finds people who are lost, buried. You want to get sent in the worst place. You want to get sent where people can't go. It's who we are. It's what we're willing to do. It's what we're comfortable with. It's hard to explain when you deliver somebody that's been lost to the family. Uh, there's no feeling like it. We're requesting uh, canine assistance here at the search. What's your ETA? 10-4, I'll be about five minutes out. Nine copies, over. My name is uh, Mike Ritzy. I'm with Kamloops Search and Rescue, and I've been with uh, Kamloops Search and Rescue for quite a few years now. I took my first uh, search and rescue course, I think, in 1976. Well, I've been working with dogs all my life, but uh, in search and rescue, I think around 11 or 12 years. I've been using Yellow Labs. Juno was my first dog, and she's retired now. She lives at home. Ruby was my second dog. Ranger is my third uh, validated search dog I have, and uh, Ranger came from Saskatchewan, uh, from Prairie Storm Kennels. Uh, they flew him out to Vancouver and went down and picked him up, and... Um, He's uh, <laughs> hey, 110%. Stay. Stay. Ranger, come. He looks like he's out of control, but that's just because he is. He's an outside dog. He's a little crazy in the house and stuff. As far as outside goes, he'll, he'll do anything. He's been on a fair number of searches, and you know he makes me look good, like I say. My name is Alan Moore. I've been with Campbell Search and Rescue since 2007. My role with Campbell Search and Rescue is as a SAR manager as well as a director on the board. Kamloops Search and Rescue's civilian dogs follow the a standard process that's uh, followed across the province, whereby the RCMP, who have the responsibility for finding lost people, validate the civilian dogs. They have standardized testing methods. And, and those dogs that are successfully passed through that process then receive a validation, so which is an, a, effectively a certification to operate on a task in support of an incident. For our SAR manager, uh, having a validated dog um, provides a level of comfort that that dog has been tested and that the dog and the handler are, have been demonstrated to work effectively together. Mike and Ranger, as a canine resource, are, are a great fit. So having a dog with that level of energy and drive and a handler with the experience that Mike has um, is an obvious uh, great fit. You know, you, you need a dog that's high energy. You can't have a flat dog. And I'm really passionate about that because when you have a flat dog and you, you take up a seat on a helicopter to fly in, and what do you do if you can't cover your area? You say to the parents, oh, I'm sorry, my dog wasn't working. You, you gotta have a dog that's really good, high drive and 110%, not on certain days, but every day. I need to teach you guys, or we need to show you that how the dog sees the world. Send. <laughs> First of all, dog's nose is highly innerviated. Okay, extremely sensitive. The most amazing thing about the dog's nose in my mind is how the schnout works. And we'll talk a little bit more of this, but I'm gonna pass this coyote skull around and I want you guys to look inside of it and just see how much surface area there is for olfactory nerves. When we look at the outside of the nose, it's actually a two-way valve. So there's a big center hole, they pull it in, that's in, and then when the dog blows out, it comes out the slits. 
what's going in and what's coming out, it doesn't intermingle. And on top of that, left and right is division. This is actually a stereo view of the world. So what we're gonna to use today is a smoke bomb. What this will represent is how the air currents flow. And if it was a person out there or something, you'll see the smoke and that's what the dog smells is how the air current goes. We got a good wind today, so we should see a really nice scent cone coming off uh, the smoke bomb. And it's really good to use these things for people when they're starting out with the dogs. Quite impressive how the wind carries the scent. And that's how a dog can pick up uh, human scent from 500 meters away. Now you can see the direction of the wind and how it's protected down low. And if somebody was in a, a little gully or something, a little washout like this, it'd be hard for somebody to see them, but a dog will pick up their smell. You can see how it goes way up and then now it's coming back down. Sometimes it'll drift in the air for 100 meters before it comes back down again. But all that scent that goes up, it has to come down somewhere. And that's why it's really beneficial to be able to read your dog. You can see it over by the river there, probably 100 meters away now, a little bit of it over there. And see how it's moving that way? And a dog would pick that up and keep working it out. The dog would figure it out after a while. You see some of these older dogs that have been searching for a long time, and they know how to use the wind on their, on their own. Ranger's still a little young. He's starting to get the hang of it, but he's a lot of energy. So he, he looks like it's chaos, but it's kind of controlled chaos. He's, he's covering ground, hoping to pick something up. I train probably five hours a week with him, just searching. I like getting out, and I like watching him work his nose. What do you got? What do you got, buddy? Oh. Good boy. This isn't actually a training technique per se. This is a philosophy of dog training. And no matter what technique you guys take up, this applies. Association is developed by repetition, doing it the same way over and over until the dog gets it. Repetition. Usually when I talk to these guys, the problem comes down to this, consistency. And this is the biggest problem with the search dog family as well. You have to be consistent. My name is Sandra Neal. I'm with Camelot Search and Rescue, and I've been with the team since 2014. And I have a puppy that I'm looking forward to bringing into the team. He's a Belgian Shepherd. He's just a little three and a half month old puppy right now. He hasn't got any status at this stage in the game. I got Tosico from a breeder called Pearl de Turbier in the Netherlands. He was pretty well a blank slate when he came. If you've got good genetics on your side, then you're more likely to have a successful dog. It's still not a guarantee. Puppies are kind of a crapshoot. Feels pretty good, yeah, but I keep forgetting about what puppies are like and the chaos that they bring to the house and the mess. And the noise, having to wake up at 5.30 in the morning to let them out. And you forget about all those things that you take for granted. I got Taz in 2014, not long after I joined the Kamloopsar team. Nothing really phased Taz. Tosico is a little bit more sensitive and he's a little bit more cautious about stuff and he's not quite as much of a bull in the china shop. It had been a bit of a roller coaster because when he was sick, with the first time, with the first infection, when the tooth was pulled out, it was a discussion with the vet about putting him down then. And then when it was time to, a couple of years later, to put him down, 
that was pretty heart-wrenching. I picked up a couple of three chickens and I was practicing my clicker training timing on the chickens. <laughs> they were quite entertaining actually to watch. I spent quite a bit of time watching them so they kind of filled a little bit of the void, but it's not quite the same as having a dog. I train pretty well daily. I probably spend one to two hours a day with Tosiko. I do obedience, I do a little bit of tracking, I do some small article training, and I do just introduction to life in general. I scuffed a three foot by three foot scent pad, made a little triangle, and then I scuffed a straight line out. The idea is he'll find that scent pad, find the wieners on the scent pad, and then follow the trail of wieners to the end. There's a little jackpot of wieners at the end. Good boy. Good. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. Nice work, buddy. Good boy. Had a good boy. Way to go, bud. Way to go. Just trying to expose him to everything that he might come across in life. I don't want him to learn to swim the first time he needs to go on a task. So along with repetition, you have anticipation. This comes from observing your dog all the time, okay? Knowing what your dog is going to do before they do it. <laughs> okay, uh, so praise. Praise the dog, praise the dog immediately. Make sure that dog knows you're happy with it. 95% it should be praised. The dog knowing it's done the right thing. My name is Carol Kappa. I've been with Kamloops Search and Rescue for almost six years. This is my first working dog. Her name is Ada. She is almost two. She's half shepherd, half Bernese. She's the size of a small horse. She is officially a puppy in training. Snatch. Hey. We've passed our first assessment with BC Search Dog Association and we'll be going for our second wilderness assessment in September. What do you got? Go get it, get it. What have you got, Ada? <laughs> good girl, she's my big girl. Good we are girl. truly a work in progress. Yeah. Myself more than the dog, I think. The struggles are when she's not responding to me or I mess up. So, you know, I miss something. Typical example is yesterday, I spent the morning with her, went on to do another little search which failed miserably. So I go home thinking, wow, it's a waste of time. And then when I replayed the video, I saw what she actually did, but I missed it in the moment. So of course I'm kicking myself thinking, I should have got that, she should have been rewarded and I missed it. So I've failed, I've failed my dog. But then, you know, the highs are when she does something perfectly. What do you got? Good girl! Woo -hoo. Oh, oh, oh. You got that! You do got it! Every time she does something successfully, I think, wow, that's amazing. I'm obsessed with her, obsessed. Everybody has different advice. So every handler has a different theory on how you should train a dog. And it's really confusing for somebody like me coming in first time, you know, trying to train a working dog because you're terrified of messing up. Generally speaking, bigger dogs find it difficult to get around. Very different behavior than some of the smaller dogs. You know, the Malinois, I mean, they have crazy energy and, and the labs. She's very, very different. Search. What have you got, my big girl? Oh, ho, ho. Yay! Good girl. But then um, one of the police instructors took me aside and said, you know, she is what she is. 
She doesn't have to be like the high energy dogs. She still covers ground and she's still focused and she's still motivated to work. Where is he? Where is he? Search! Good boy, where is it? Speak, speak, speak. Oh, you good boy, good boy. Every year the RCMP comes up and validates your dog. You know, it, it's really tough when they don't pass, but what's tougher is when you tell somebody that, oh, my dog missed your child because it wasn't working well. And that's why the RCMP have a really tough job and they have to weed those dogs out. And it, it's tough, it's like a, a child, it's like a child you don't want the teacher to call you in and say, uh, you know, your, your son isn't going to make it. I refuse to go there at this point. So we are aiming to be validated. Um, I think that's a big part of overcoming any challenge frame of mind. So we're going to pass. And all, kind of all the stars have to line up. And if the stars don't line up, then one thing goes wrong and you're back to square one. They're not holding you back. They're not getting rid of your dog because they don't like you. They're getting rid of your dog because down the road, your dog could cost somebody's life. So if, when you get uh, validated, you know, you should feel good and it's for a reason. You're out there to save lives. I try not to listen to everybody's version. I just focus on Ada and what my skills are, where I need to work and I try and block out all the chat about validation because, you know, everybody has their own version, hey? Their version is not gonna be my version. Forget validation. Work on knowing your dog. Dog handlers, forward! So as you guys know what we're doing, we're evaluating the dog. We're actually showing the dog that, hey, you find live human scent, your nose tells me that scent is, and you're gonna get the best reward in the world, what you want more than anything else. They have to have that hunting drive. And what we're trying to see here is if they have it enough. It's a tough decision sometimes. We get a group of people in and we assess the dog and we also give them all the information we can. We show this great, fantastic, incredible world that is dog handling and then we say no. So what we're doing the first round is we're actually just assessing the dog to see if it has it. When we're rewarding the dog, if we're not acting like an idiot, we're doing it wrong. It just has to be a lot of enthusiasm and a lot of high, high level of energy. All right, so, and this is Handler. You grip the toy side to side. You try and pull him towards you. <laughs> He's a brave little guy. But for the shark dogs, how do you think it would look like that? You're standing right on top of him. It's a bit intimidating. It is, yeah. yeah. So for this, by the way, and you turn your side to him. Now you're giving the sensation that, hey, I'm gonna pray. I'm gonna run for my life here. Uh, okay. okay. <laughs> you, you really think you're tough, don't you? <laughs> Look at his body language right now, mm -hmm. okay? So this is a dog that likes this game. This is the finger painting 
of training. Notice where the the leash is uh, attached to the, the harness? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. That's actually a pull signal. Have you ever seen the person, the dog's walking now? Mm -hmm. They're actually letting, the dog's getting what it wants. Mm -hmm. It's actually pulling that person. So it's actually an instinct the dogs have. You pull back, they want to go forward. Mm -hmm. So you're actually giving them that energy mm -hmm. down that leash. I say it's neck to control, harness to go. So last thing we did, we'll repeat that exercise. So something really interesting happened there. First she gave a command, and the dog turned around and looked at her, and then Sandra moved this way. Dog moved that way. Where the handler goes, the dog should go. Yeah, so this is an experienced handler. Some of the best search dogs I know over the years, they literally died playing fetch. We can't afford to have a dog out there that will work some of the time, but not all the time. And one of the sayings we have here is we run away from maybe. Right now in the bush, we don't have the wind that we did yesterday that's very surface scent. Okay, so then you gotta tighten up your, your grid pattern. Okay, who's going next? We're gonna do a ditch search, so it's smaller articles. We were just practicing this yesterday, so kind of the big challenge for me and Ada is timing when I give her the reward when she indicates. So yeah, it's probably me that will let the whole process down. Ada is doing really good. She's not like a, a high energy lab, but she's very methodical. She's very thorough and she enjoys it. What do you got, Ada? You good girl! Hey, hey, what a good girl! You found it! Hey, you got it! The feedback from the whole weekend was strong, methodical search team, excellent bond between dog and handler. So that's really encouraging to know that we're heading in the right direction, that we've achieved what we should have achieved, and that he was pleased with our progress. And his words were, I fully expect you to validate in spring. I'm gonna continue doing the same. I still have work to do. I mean, by no means we were perfect. I was a little bit concerned that he was maybe too young and he's teething and he might not wanna play tug and stuff like that, but I just got everybody to make sure they were gentle with him. And uh, they called him a little rock star, so. so he gets to go on to the next stage. He's doing pretty good for, you know, he's six months old. His tracking's come along quite well. He's doing pretty good for that. Where are you going, eating grass? Come on back. There are some uh, big changes coming to uh, the validation process here in British Columbia. There's uh, national standards that are being brought in. The new thing is the tracking, and nobody likes change. Everybody is scared of change, but I think it's time we try to meet the national standards and do what we can to get our tracking validation. Fortunately, we do have quite some time 
to prepare ourselves for that assessment. It kind of feels as though the goalposts have moved a little bit, but at the same time, it's good fun for Ada. It's more for me to learn. It's on a long list of things to learn, and it's usually me that needs to learn that. It's going to be a lot more work, and these are volunteer people, and we have to keep that in mind. My validation doesn't come due until uh, October, first part of October, end of September, and by that time, if I stick with it, I think I'll have myself a tracking dog. The dogs always make you proud when you, you get out there and you, you can watch them work and, and you know they're, they're working as hard as they can and they always make me proud. I don't know what makes a good dog trainer. I think the, the passion for what, what you do is, is the, the number one thing and you have to be in it for the right reasons. You know, it's something that's, I don't know, it's in, it's in your blood. You keep doing this searching because there's no other feeling like it when you get out there and you're with your dog, you're working your dog and uh, you get to see all kinds of places in the province. I would say that it takes a lot of time. You have to make sure that you've got the dedication just because that's what I enjoy with dogs and working with dogs. And so it's a personal enjoyment I get, so it is worth it. It's exceeded my expectations. I knew it was going to be hard work, but I think training any animal is hard work. It's just different. The rewards that I get back from Ada, I didn't expect that at all.